Hello, I am Dr. Imran Khan. Today we will discuss self-heating and reliability issues in FinFET transistors and 3D ICs. In FinFET, self-heating and reliability issues are more serious compared to other planar transistors. Self-heating issues in conventional planar transistors are controlled by moving the generated heat away down into the bulk of the device. However, in FinFET, self-heating is a serious issue because of complex geometry and there is nowhere for the heat to go. Self-heating of FinFET causes many problems like increase in temperature of the metal wires which results in enhancing the electromigration effect. So, in this lecture, today uh, we are going to discuss this uh, self-heating model of FinFET and uh, design consideration to minimize the power dissipation uh, in FinFET in details, okay? So, uh, let's start. So, starting from the introduction, as you know that nowadays we have billions of transistors in our integrated circuits. So, these uh, transistors generate heat when they are operating. So, because of this heat generation, uh, there is a problem with chip reliability, okay? Uh, a small increase in uh, 10 to uh, 15 degree centigrade uh, injunction temperature may result in two times uh, reduction in li lifespan of device. In conventional uh, bulk transistor, self heating is controlled in the way that the heat moves away down into the bulk of the devices. Uh, in newer uh, FinFit, however, it, co uh, it could pose a serious problem because there is nowhere for the heat to go. The self-heating of FinFit can locally increase the temperature in metal wires uh, which enhances the electromigration effects. Scaling uh, to the end of the road map. For the last three decades, the microelectronic industry has benefited from MOSFET miniaturization. The shrinking of Transistors to dimension below 100 nanometer enables hundreds of millions of transistors to be placed on single chip. The increased functionality and reduced cost of large variety of integrated circuits and systems has brought its own benefit to the end user and above all the semiconductor industry. A low cost manufacturing increased speed of data transfer, computer processing power and ability to accomplish multiple tasks simultaneously are some of the major advantages gained as a result of transistor scaling. So, in this uh, diagram, we have this uh, uh, scaling to the end of the roadmap. Okay? Uh, so, here we have uh, 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 32 nanometers, okay? 22 nanometers and beyond uh, 10 nanometers. Okay? So, for uh, 32 nanometers, we have uh, 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 the planar transistors, okay? So, uh, and for uh, 22 nanometers, we have this 3D FinFET structures, okay? So, it was the Intel who first time uh, uh, basically developed this uh, 22 nanometer uh, structures and uh, they used uh, in their uh, product, okay, for the first time. Uh, so, beyond uh, 10 nanometer, uh, we have these stack nanowires transistors okay so uh, this is uh, uh, here you can see again the scaling to the end of the road map okay so here we have uh, the prediction for uh, next uh, 15 years okay from uh, year uh, 2017 to year uh, uh, 2023 uh, uh, 20, uh, 2033 okay so okay so uh, let's start so here uh, uh, this diagram is basically a preview of uh, 2017 international roadmap for devices and systems okay uh, for future 3d structures okay so here uh, uh, this s is basically source d is drain g is gate okay so fdsoi what is this fdsoi it is fully depleted silicon on insulator okay and uh, what is this lgaa lgaa is basically lateral gate uh, gate all around okay 
and uh, this T box, uh, this T box is basically thin buried oxide and VGAA, this VGAA is vertical gate all around. Okay, so these were the abbreviations. So here uh, uh, you can see that uh, for uh, 10 nanometer uh, uh, process technology, we have this uh, uh, fin fit structures and for 7 nanometer, we have this uh, nano wide structures. Okay, and uh, in, a, in year 2021 for uh, 5 nanometers, uh, we will have this uh, uh, VGAA. Okay, so this uh, uh, VGAA is basically vertical gate all around. Okay, uh, but uh, after year uh, uh, 2024, okay, so this uh, 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 here you can see this 3D IC. Okay, so 3D IC. So here you can see uh, this 3D IC. Uh, we have different layers. Okay, so uh, th this is 3D IC structures. Okay, so after year uh, uh, 2024, um, we will be able to uh, uh, get more functionalities uh, in our integrated circuits by using this 3D IC technology. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the important prediction uh, ba basically. So uh, this uh, 22 uh, nanometer 3D. Uh, tri gate transistor okay so this was uh, first time developed by uh, the intel okay so this uh, uh, 3d uh, tri gate transistor uh, form conducting channel on three sides of a vertical fin structure providing fully depleted operation okay so here uh, you can see this is uh, uh, the 3d fin fit structure okay so transistors have now entered the th third dimensions okay so uh, here uh, you can see the images okay so this is uh, basically uh, the fabrication of uh, 3d uh, transistor technology okay uh, so here is the difference between uh, 32 nanometer planar transistor and 22 nanometer tri gate transistors okay so here you can see these are uh, the planar transistors and the, these are uh, tri gate uh, transistors or the fin fit technology okay so here you can see a lot of fins here okay so what are the benefits of uh, 3d uh, tri gate transistor okay so this 3d uh, tri gate transistor uh, has dramatic performance gain at low operating uh, voltage okay so it is better than bulk uh, this uh, PDSOI or partially depleted silicon on insulator or FDSOI or fully depleted silicon on insulator structures. Okay, so it has basically 37% uh, performance increase at low voltage, 50% uh, uh, power reduction. Okay, improved switching characteristics, higher drive runs. Okay, and uh, only uh, a little. Uh, cost adder okay uh, only two to three uh, percent co of cost adder okay uh, 3d tri gate transistors are an important innovation uh, needed to continue the Morris law okay so this is an uh, important observation here uh, so transistor innovation enable cost benefit of Morris law to co continue okay so here you can see this is the process technology and this is the cost per transistor okay so as we are uh, scaling down our transistor cost per transistor is continually reducing okay so uh, because you know that nowadays we have uh, billions of transistors in our integrated circuits okay so uh, the cost per, per transistor is continually decreasing with scaling okay so uh, the power dissipation okay so now we will discuss uh, uh, the power dissipation in our integrated circuits uh, uh, because you know that uh, um, uh, we are continually increasing the number of transistors in our uh, 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 integrated circuits okay because we are scaling down our transistor and uh, we want our integrated uh, 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 circuit to be more powerful okay uh, so uh, because of the lot of lot of transistors uh, because of uh, billions of transistors okay uh, we have uh, the more power dissipation in our integrated circuit so power dissipation is a major problem uh, in our integrated circuits okay so here uh, this is the power dissipation and uh, uh, 
this is the relationship between power dissipation and the number of years from 1971 to 2008 okay so here you can see that the power uh, uh, dissipation is continually increasing in our uh, integrated circuits or the microprocessors okay so here uh, you can see the trend okay so the power dissipation continually increasing okay so here you can see the relationship so this is uh, the hot plate okay so uh, the temperature of hot plate is approximately equal to the uh, power dissipation uh, by this pentium 6 computer okay so here uh, you can see uh, the power density of a nuclear reactor and the uh, rocket nozzle okay so so this power density or the power dissipation is required to be controlled in our uh, integrated circuit designs okay so so here uh, we have this uh, 3d relationship okay so this diagram is showing the relationship between number of years processing power number of transistors and the microprocessors released by the intel okay so here you can see that with the passage of time uh, we are getting more and more number of transistors in our integrated circuits or the microprocessor but at the same time we are getting more power dissipation okay so uh, this power dissipation uh, is a major issue in our integrated circuit design or the microprocessor technology okay so uh, this power dissipation is required to be controlled okay uh, so here uh, we have this uh, various FET uh, device structures okay so uh, here uh, we have this uh, uh, bulk silicon MOSFET strained silicon MOSFET and uh, here we have this dual gate silicon on insulator and uh, here we have this ultra thin body SOI structure and uh, here we have this uh, finfit structure okay so so you know you, you know that because of the uh, co complex geometry and uh, confined dimensions self heating problem in uh, finfit is more serious compared to uh, these uh, other planar transistors okay so here uh, we can see uh, this is our finfit structure okay okay so these are uh, uh, the various multi gate transistor uh, structures supported in uh, BSIM CMG model okay so this BSIM is basically Berkeley short channel insulated field effect transistor model it was developed by University of California Berkeley in 1990s okay so nowadays uh, this BSIM model is the industry standard okay so these are uh, the different variations which we can use uh, uh, in our uh, advanced process technologies okay so this is uh, here you can see FinFET on bulk FinFit on uh, silicon on insulator, okay. Uh, a vertical common gate FET. So here we have this uh, 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 twin silicon uh, nanowire FET and horizontal nanowire FET, okay. So and uh, here we have this thermal conductivity of uh, few materials, okay. So like this silicon 148, germanium 60, and for other. Uh, um, uh, basically materials you can uh, see the thermal conductivity here okay uh, so uh, this is uh, the simple uh, sketch of uh, MOSFET okay uh, so MOSFET here you can see this is uh, the source gate drain and uh, here uh, you have this uh, buried oxide here okay so uh, this is uh, basically the fins okay so this is a uh, fin width and fin height okay so here uh, you can see uh, these are the fins okay so so here uh, you can see that because of uh, complex geometry and uh, confined dimension self fitting uh, problem in uh, fin fit uh, is more serious okay so the thermal device design is becoming an important part part of 3d ic's as the transistor uh, lengths are scaling down towards uh, uh, 7 nanometers okay so decreasing the dimensions will result in hot spot in the drain region of the transistors okay so here uh, uh, we will have uh, the hot spot in our uh, 
drain regions here. FinFit seems the best transistor for scaling uh, uh, beyond the 22 nanometer due to better uh, electrostatics. Okay. However, uh, compared to planar transistors, self-heating uh, issues in FinFit are more serious uh, because of uh, less conductivity of uh, uh, interlayer dielectric material and uh, buried oxide. Okay. So here uh, you can see a complex 3D structure of FinFit and uh, 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 physical confinement of uh, SI fin uh, play important role in self heating. Okay, so here uh, you can see in the structure these things. The lower thermal conductivity of uh, silicon uh, thin film also increases the self heating effect. Okay, from uh, scaling point of view, the ultra thin body uh, uh, silicon on insulator or UTB. UTB SOI devices are uh, uh, best for uh, scaling up to 10 nanometer and beyond. Okay, so uh, here uh, you can see this is uh, the simple FinFit structure, and uh, uh, here are some cooling paths. Okay, so here uh, you can see some cooling path for uh, uh, our FinFit device. Okay, so obviously. Uh, the self heating uh, is a more serious issue uh, in our FinFit structures. Okay, uh, so here uh, uh, we have some results to uh, share with you. Okay, so like uh, this is uh, the relationship between temperature and number of fins. Okay, so uh, this is the drain temperature. Okay, so this uh, in the black uh, it is gate temperature, and uh, here you can see this is uh, the channel temperature and the source temperature okay so uh, here you can see that the drain temperature is higher okay so the drain temperature is higher and uh, the source temperature is lower okay so similarly uh, here uh, we have uh, the relationship between number of fins and number of gates okay so uh, here uh, you can see that uh, there is uh, no effect in temperature if we increase the number of gates okay uh, but if we increase the number of fins uh, it will affect the power dissipation okay so you have to be very careful uh, when you increase the number of fins okay because uh, with the increase in number of fins uh, it will automatically increase uh, the temperature in the device okay so here uh, uh, you can see so uh, in this diagram so this is basically uh, the Monte Carlo simulation of heat generation along the channel of uh, uh, 10 nanometer uh, double gate silicon on insulator okay so with the VDD or supply voltage is equal to 0.6 volt okay uh, the source and drains are uh, left and uh, right of the vertical dotted lines okay so uh, this this is uh, the vertical dotted lines okay so here uh, uh, we have this source and drain okay so unlike the profile of uh, uh, the j dot e uh, product the mc uh, or the monte carlo uh, result shows the uh, best uh, uh, or uh, shows uh, uh, basically the more heat generated uh, at uh, this uh, here okay so here uh, you can see that the centroid of uh, the heat generation uh, is at distance LQ okay LQ from the edge of the gate okay so here uh, uh, you can see that okay so the peak of this uh, uh, power dissipation is inside the drain okay so here uh, you can see uh, this uh, g dot e okay so this is the product and these are uh, the monte carlo simulation okay so here you can see this is uh, the centroid of uh, the heat generation at uh, inside the drain okay so it is uh, at distance uh, lq from uh, the gate okay so so here uh, we have uh, uh, more results to share uh, with you okay uh, so uh, let's uh, discuss these two results 
first okay so these are estimated uh, uh, drain site uh, okay so this is uh, the drain temperature and this is the source temperature okay so so for this is for uh, single gate uh, uh, ultra thin body uh, silicon on insulator device okay so here uh, uh, we assume that the extension len length is equal to lg by 2 okay uh, the the five sets of lines correspond to uh, raised source drain heights between uh, uh, tsd or uh, drain source thickness is equal to tsi okay so from uh, 1 2 3 4 up to 5 okay so the taller source drain uh, reduces electrical series resistance and also help decrease uh, device temperature okay so so we have to uh, raise uh, uh, epitaxially raise our source and drain to uh, reduce the power dissipation okay in our fan fit device uh, so in this figure we have uh, this thermal conductivity scaling of ultra uh, uh, thin device layer as a function of uh, bulk thermal conductivity okay so here uh, you can see so you can see that uh, dash line represent the thermal conductivity of undoped channel okay uh, the five solid lines are thermal conductivity uh, of the highly doped source drain regions okay so here uh, you can see from uh, uh, n is equal to 1 to 5 okay so this tsd is equal to n tsi okay so n uh, uh, this is from 1 2 3 4 5 okay so 1 up to uh, 5 so here you can see uh, for the shortest device the thermal conductivity of uh, uh, the layer can drop uh, well below 10% of its value in the bulk silicon okay so here we have uh, another result to share with you okay so this is uh, basically the comparison of uh, drain side uh, uh, temperature rise for a single gate soi okay so it is in solid line and the fin fit in dashed line okay so uh, this soi structure this is the solid line and uh, this dash line is uh, basically the fin fit structures okay so the fin fit uh, cha channel width is uh, uh, two times the fin height and fin height is four times uh, the silicon thickness okay so the extension lengths are assumed uh, to scale as uh, extension length is equal to lg by 2 okay uh, the thicker body and uh, the larger wrap on the gate oxide surface uh, uh, of the fin fit helps lower its temperature okay so here uh, uh, you can see okay uh, in case of fin fit so um, here we have uh, 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 this uh, uh, final fin fit structure okay so what are the design concentration to uh, minimize the self heating okay so this we are uh, uh, going to uh, discuss here okay so okay so let's discuss it here so here uh, you can see that the pro proper design considerations are uh, required to uh, minimize the self heating and fin fit and uh, uh, and also other advanced transistors okay so the electrostatic is required uh, required the thin body of the device and thicker buried oxide and because uh, the surface thermal resistance limits the transfer of heat through the contacts and gate oxide so uh, lesser series thermal resistance of drain and source region uh, make the transfer of heat easier okay so to, re to reduce uh, the thermal series resistance and electrical series resistance there is a need to reduce extension length okay so this is your extension length or lex okay reduce extension length and epitaxially uh, raise the source drain height okay so here uh, we have this source and drain okay so you can also uh, raise this source drain height or reduce this lex to uh, reduce the power dissipation in fin fit okay 
so uh, these are uh, basically uh, uh, basically the design considerations which you can uh, uh, use to uh, uh, basically minimize the power dissipation uh, in your fan fed structures okay uh, so the design considerations okay the fin fit generates more uh, drain current so it may may be used for higher current applications okay so the power dissipation uh, may not be the starting point to design with fin fit because a device who generates more current will dissipate more power by reducing vdd self heating in fit fin fit can be controlled okay uh, so what are the conclusion self heating is a major issue in advanced devices silicon on insulator fin fit self heating uh, uh, is more compared to the bulk fin fit okay so uh, because we already know that uh, the power dissipation is a major uh, problem faced by the integrated circuit designers due to scaling we are able to integrate a large number of transistors on a small silicon area uh, finfit help the designer to scale the device down to 22 nanometer uh, or even uh, 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 10 nanometers and beyond uh, because of complex geometry and confined dimension self heating problem uh, in finfit is more serious compared to the planar transistors but at the same time finfit generates more current compared to other planar transistors silicon on insulator finfit self heating is worse compared to bulk finfit because in bulk finfit heat can dissipate through the bulk uh, while in case of soi finfit the presence of uh, oxide insulator in in increases uh, the heat dissipation design consideration to minimize the self heating uh, in our uh, fin fit includes epitaxially uh, raising the source drain height and shortening the extension length or lex drain region of uh, the fin fit dissipates more power due to rise in temperature at the drain compared to the other regions okay so the source region of uh, fin fit dissipates less power self heating increases with increase in number of fins while the increase in number of gates make no reasonable change in self heating self heating uh, decreases the reliability of the device and causes many problems like electro migration effects okay so this was uh, all for today so if you have any problem related to this lecture please uh, feel free to contact me via email okay thank you very much for uh, today uh, see you next time